everyone, Mark McAuliffe here from Harwa Australia. Uh, and today I wanted to give you all a first look uh, at the brand new Harwa Conceptor 3 uh, configurator and planning tool. Now, as you all know, uh, we've been eagerly awaiting the launch of the new Conceptor here in Australia. Conceptor 3 is what we call it. Um, and, and that will be happening very, very shortly through Haifley uh, Australia and of course in uh, New Zealand through Haifley in New Zealand. Uh, ahead of this, these launches and releases, uh, the new configurator just landed last night. Um, so let's run through. So in order to uh, access the configurator, uh, the best way to do this is to type into your browser, Hawa uh, Conceptor 3, and it will uh, give you a few options, but we wanna go to the Hawa Conceptor 3 landing page on the Hawa's website. This will give you all of the information about the new Hawa Conceptor, uh, as you know, uh, the new hardware conceptor doesn't use the old scissor mechanism to move uh, the door. It uses a completely um, redone, uh, redesigned uh, and re-engineered system um, to operate the door. So it's a fantastic new product. And if you scroll down, you'll get some information, uh, some videos, which of course you can see the operation of the new system. So we can design the new system either with a handle uh, and movement assistance, uh, or we can design the system without a handle, uh, and that system allows us to operate um, the conceptor door, very similar to the way that we used to operate the door, uh, even when it had the scissor. So two different um, design options, and then of course, we have multiple design options within those two variants as well. So with handles, without handles, full height doors uh, and we can also then uh, have these doors onto a countertop now what is really really special about the new Harwood conceptor of course is the mechanism so as we said before we used to have a heavy scissor mechanism we've replaced that completely with a brand new prefabricated or largely prefabricated system that takes around about six minutes to install and it really is that easy um, as you can see here, the system kind of clicks together uh, and pulls out. Looks a little bit like a remote control car when you put it, pull it out of the pack. Uh, there are so many uh, components which have been prefabricated. You stretch that out onto the upright profile and 90% of your application is finished. On top of that really, really simple and easy uh, installation, uh, we also have uh, improved um, installation details like how you attach the door and hang the door, how you adjust the system. Um, so this is an absolutely fabulous uh, new release from Harwa uh, and something that we're sure that you're all going to enjoy. More installation and details of the system are available on this page. Uh, and if you scroll through, you'll get to this little button which says the Harwa configuration tool. We click on that button and it will direct us to the new online Harwa configurator. Uh, we click on the button to the configurator uh, and then we land on with the first page of the configuration. Of course, you can configure many, many different hardware products for furniture uh, within buildings uh, and also on buildings as well. We have a, an incredible range of products. Uh, but let's go to the on furniture section. Uh, and this is where we will find the configurator for the Harbour Conceptor 3 family. We click on that and put uh, next and it asks us whether we would like to configure a single door or a two door application. In this uh, instance, we're going to do a single door application. And then it asks us if we would like a, a right door or a left door configuration. Um, the new Harbour Conceptor 3 is handed. You need to choose whether you've got a left or a right hand door. Um, so for this configuration, we will choose the left hand door. Click on next. The system then takes us to the detailed selection uh, of our system. So the first thing you'll notice is that there's a 3D model and the 3D model is fantastic. It's interactive. Uh, we can have a look around the, the system and, um, you know, and zoom in and, and see all of these little details, um, the connectors, the gaps and so on. And we can see this system, of course, change as we change our configuration. So the first thing I, I want to do is on the right hand side here is to select whether I want my configuration to um, you know, have uh, a door which strikes against the top and the bottom of the cabinet. So basically a freestanding cabinet. I can uh, change that configuration to uh, a door without a base panel. So for example, if I've got uh, a study area and I want to, to slide a, a chair into the cabinet, for example, I wouldn't want anything um, on the bottom of the cabinet. So that's a different application. 
I have my third application option, uh, which is an on bench top application or what we call a, 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 a composed cabinet. Uh, so we can see there that the cabinet door doesn't go all the way to the ground and it stops on top of the cabinet. And then our final uh, option is what we would call an inlay uh, door. So this is where you want to see um, the edge of the cabinet on all four sides. Uh, so that's what we call an inlay. So the door basically goes inside of the top and the bottom of the cabinet rather than on uh, on top of the, the cabinet as is, uh, is traditional and normal with most of these cabinets. So four uh, very different design options available. Now, the most common application we see in Australia is uh, the without cabinet base uh, panel. So that's the one that we would do the configuration for today. I also should mention on the left hand side, we have a few options. We're currently looking at the 3D, uh, three dimensional drawing uh, that we can play with. We can also uh, click on the 2D option uh, and looking at 2D, all of a sudden we get a more detailed uh, plan of the cabinet. So this shows us all of our dimensions uh, and the different versions uh, of the, the cabinet in both uh, plan and section detail. Uh, and of course, some um, some blown up details, as you can see here with the Z3, Z1 numbers. We'll get back to that uh, in a second. So now that we've chosen our cabinet, um, the next thing we need to do is scroll down and hit next. And then we get our second option. And this is where we need to choose whether we want a push to open cabinet. So this is where we, from the face of the cabinet, we push to open, we pull the door out, we push it in, load it into the pocket so it's flush, and then we push and that will automatically come out and we just need to close that door on top of the cabinet. So that is with operating assistance or what we know as the push system. The alternative is uh, what we know as the pull system. Now the pull system is slightly different. This is when we have a handle. What we want to do is we want to open that door uh, manually. We want to push that door in to the, the pocket and the system has a soft close at the back of the cabinet. So the last sort of 50 to 100 millimetres of that movement will be automated and soft close into the cabinet, giving you a really beautiful experience. And then we can simply pull that, uh, that door out of the pocket and close that. So this is without operating assistance. So that's the two options we have available. Um, for this uh, application, we're going to choose uh, a door with operating assistance, and then we're going to click next. Of course, at any time we have the option to change this the, the picture that we're seeing on the left hand side to a 3D rather than a 2D uh, image. That's totally up to you and how you prefer to plan and what you prefer to see when we're planning. Where I think the 2D information becomes really important is when we start to, uh, to plan the dimensions, so the more detailed dimensions of the door, because what we can see here is the, uh, the detail. So we have here the cabinet height, which is in brackets the SH. And if we go over to the configurator, you can see here that SH number is, is shown uh, in that first image. So let's just change that for uh, this uh, application. Let's say 2160 is the height, um, and that will automatically uh, update the system. Um, then we have the cabinet width. Uh, it's nominal uh, 600 millimetres. Uh, we'll change that to 720. So you'll see that that has updated. So the SH number is now 2160 and the SB number uh, is 720. Uh, the cabinet depth can be between 436 and 1500 millimetres uh, deep. Uh, and what it's saying is for if we want a flush finish, so when we push that door in, if we want the door to be flush with the pocket when it's pocketed into the cabinet, we need at least a 791 millimeter wide uh, uh, or deep cabinet. Uh, and that's based on the cabinet width that I've, uh, I've put there. Um, so let's just go with that for this application. So 791, uh, and that will also change uh, the dimension uh, that we see on the uh, left-hand side there. All right, we also have a door overlay. Uh, so this door overlay, same as it was before, the door overlay is basically the, the, the depth or how far the door sticks out of the cabinet when it's finished. Uh, at the moment, that's 142. You can see here that the M is 142. Uh, let's reduce that all the way down to uh, 22 millimeters for this application. All right, once we get our cabinet details in, we click next, and then we have to choose uh, even more detail around the application. Um, so the door thickness, um, so the door thickness can be from 18 millimeters all the way up 26 millimetres, so the system can only accommodate a maximum door thickness of 26 millimetres. 
and then we can choose the material type. Um, now, I already know that the door that I've chosen, it is a very wide door, um, 720 millimetres uh, and a very deep cabinet. Uh, so with 26 millimetre MDF, this door might be too heavy. So I might go back to uh, my dimensions and, uh, and make them a little bit more um, similar. Um, so by the way, the system will have a trigger when you go to install uh, or when go to generate your plan. If your um, cabinet is not sufficient, Oh, sorry, if your door is too heavy for the new conceptor, uh, it will automatically flag that and you'll have to go back and change those parameters. We go back over here. And now we want, uh, let's change that to an 18 millimeter MDF. And click next. And then we've got our dimensions uh, of our panel. So again, we will, 18 millimeter MDF is what we're gonna be using. We'll go through and change all of those dimensions. And then we also have a rear panel. Um, so we'll, we'll use a rear panel, uh, eight millimeter thick, uh, which is represented by the, uh, the detail that you see there, the RS number. And you can see how everything has changed. So the AS, which is basically our, uh, our panel depth or panel width has gone to 18 millimeters. Our cabinet, cabinet depth or cabinet width has gone to 610 millimeters. Cabinet depth has gone to 660 millimeters. Uh, our projection of our um, of our door has gone to 22 millimetres. That's all based on what we've inserted into the system previously. Um, and let's change our rear panel to eight millimetres. OK, let's go next. Now we need to design the gap sizes. So what gaps do we want to see around the door? Uh, let's make that two millimetres at the top. Uh, the bottom gap. One of the big advantages of this new system is that we don't need to leave a 17 millimeter or 20 millimeter gap between the bottom of the, the cabinet uh, and the, the, um, the cabinet door. That can be as low as 10 millimeters. So we'll leave a 10 millimeter gap. Uh, outer side gap, two millimeters and the other side gap, two millimeters. So let's continue with the application. Now we get to use our straightening fitting. So we get to choose optionally a straightening fitting. Um, and we offer that in either an anodized aluminium, a standard aluminium uh, or a black. Uh, the black looks really sleek um, and, uh, and, and colors, uh, color codes in really well with the rest of the system. And then we finalize our configuration by choosing what we want the output to be. So we're gonna have an output, which is a 2D installation plan, a PDF. We also get the option of an items part list um, the dimensional tables and a step file. So the step file is a 3D, 3D file, which you can then use to enter into your, um, uh, your CNC machine. So let's ask for that in the, uh, in the response and also ask for a 2D plan and a P PDF installation. Once we click, click next, it will ask us the name of our configuration. So let's say APAC test uh, number five, for example. We click next and then it will ask us where we want to send uh, the output uh, of this system. So um, so this will give us our email address. So I'll type in my email address, markmichaelof at hawa.com. Next. And uh, and then it will tell us that the system has now sent um, our email, which is great. Oh, sorry, we need to accept that we, we want to accept that information. Um, and then we're, we're completed. So it says, thank you. Your data will be created and sent to you by email. Uh, and if you want to start a new configuration, you can click here. All right, now what's really brilliant about this system is once we get that configuration, uh, what we, we see is this. It's a, basically a customized installation manual and instruction manual for your specific job. So we see here our first page, which gives us our configuration details. We then have our second page, which shows us our 3D extended uh, view. So this is what our door looks like. We don't have a bottom panel. Uh, as we designed. We then have our list of accessories and part numbers that we need to order. Our third page uh, goes into more detail around our configuration, so our cabinet dimensions, height, widths and uh, depth, and then uh, all of the other dimensions that we entered into our system, including the gaps, uh, the rear panel sizes, the, the total um, uh, handle spacing, etc. So all of the information that we put in, and it even gives us our exact door weight uh, for that system as well. Scroll a little bit further and it starts to give us our cutting list. So the first uh, bit of this information, the first part of the table is our board material. So how do we have to cut our board? 
Uh, well, it tells us our door leaf size, which is 2187 by 578 by 18. That's our, our door leaf uh, and all of the other, um, for example, the rear panel, which is an eight millimetre thick 2181 by 490. So there's no guesswork. Your panels just have to get cut to these sizes and they will be perfectly suitable for this system. We also have our cutting dimensions for our profiles. So our running track um, needs to be cut to 643 millimetres. You see that uh, top and bottom track. We have our upright profile, which needs to be cut to 19 54 millimetres, and then we have our uh, our connector profile and our steel profiles, which are 560 and 559 millimetres, respectively. So there's nothing you can do wrong there. Cut your panels and your uh, tracks to those dimensions, um, and it should be quite easy to install from there. We then have our um, uh, plan view of the cabinet, so the exact dimensions, uh, when the door is closed, when the door is open, uh, and then a, a section detail. Um, and then a plan view of those same configurations. So we should be able to get a really good understanding by now for exactly where all of our panels are going. If you're um, not sure in that first table what is meant by cover or outer side or fitting side or op opposite side, um, you'll be able to see that down the bottom here. So outer panel, uh, opposite side, fitting side and door leaf. Um, so it is all work that all of the information is there and really easy to access. We've got some more details, um, really uh, detailed information about the gaps um, and the configurations and the connections between each of the, the systems. Uh, we've got our door overhang here of 22 millimetres. Of course, you can design that so that it is zero uh, and we don't have any door pr protrusion. Uh, that's totally up to you and the configuration. Um, we then have our next view, which, which shows how the door inserts into the cabinet and what is highlighted here is the connector profiles so we do have a connection system once we install uh, our our fitting set to uh, the inside panel we then have our cover cover panel which goes over the top to hide that system if we've got a freestanding cabinet and we have a connector profile uh, which is exactly 55 millimetres wide. So one of the important things about the new system is that dimensionally is, is almost exactly the same. Uh, the only change is the sliding depth, uh, which is slightly slightly more at 95 millimetres uh, rather than 73 as it was previously. Uh, next page, we have uh, the view of the hardware as installed uh, onto the fitting side. Uh, so this is the left-hand sliding system you'll notice that we have uh, a top track, a bottom track. We have one bracket in the back of the system, and then we have our upright profile connected to our, our, our conceptor. So no longer do you see the big scissor mechanism, no longer do we have multiple brackets that you need to connect to. It is as simple as um, you know, really three connection points, uh, top, bottom rail, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, back bracket, and that is the system complete. We have all of our drilling dimensions next, uh, really well laid out. As, as we said, there's very little to drill. Uh, in most cases, there's as few as 12 screws. Uh, maybe for some wider cabinets, we have up to 14 screws required, uh, but very, very simple uh, installation. Same thing for from another view. And then finally, we have the door panel uh, itself. So the door panel, we do suggest the use of um, uh, of the straightening fittings. Um, the other addition to this system is the addition of the magnetic strips. So we do have a magnetic strip on the door and that helps to really easily and nicely slide uh, that door uh, out of the pocket and does make a very, very big difference in terms of the movement, the stability, um, the smoothness, the quietness of that panel as well. So that is the system planner. Uh, that's the output that we get. And the configurator, as you can see, is very, very simple. The output is far more comprehensive than it ever was before. Um, and we really hope that you enjoy using this new system. And any questions, please contact us at hawa.com.au or directly to me at mark.mikhailoff at hawa.com. Thank you very much for listening, guys. Really looking forward to your feedback.